Mohammad Yadu from the south side of India and welcome to Machan vs. the World podcast. I've been lucky enough to be studying at a university in Moscow with students from across the world. I want to use this opportunity to learn more about the different peoples through their stories. Join me on this journey across the world through stories told by the people that have lived them. With me, you're Machan. That means bro in South Indian languages. I hope you learned something new with me today. Hello everybody, we are back with Russification and that means we are going deep into Russia and with me this time we have Asyat and she's a student of MGU, Linguistics Department and as you'll soon find out, she speaks English better than me. She studies English and French and she is here from the Caucasus and we are going to talk about Karachai Cherkessia. I'm trying my best to get the name right. Did I get it right, Asyat? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that's right. That was right. That was right. 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 Okay, plus five points for me. So, how have you been? How are you? Oh, it's good. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, the weather is. Oh yeah. Like, it's so sunny and. It is, and yeah. the, I think the last time I recorded a podcast, it was quite depressing the weather, yeah. but now it's warm. Yesterday was depressing. Yesterday was depressing. Yeah. Even today morning was depressing. I didn't run today morning because of the weather, yeah. and um, so we met through Milana. Yeah. And that's how all the, the caucus thing came up because I asked Milana, so Milana's a friend of mine, she's in my class and she she's like a permanent resident of the library like me, but I asked her once if, I, if she can find me some from the caucuses, talk about mm-hmm. a Caucasian Republic in English and she told her it was almost impossible and then one day you came with her and she introduced us and I've just found out your English was so good and you're from the caucuses too and I immediately <laughs> said we need to do a podcast and that's how we met. Yeah. Yeah, and you're here right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how's it been? How's it been like learning English? Uh, like pretty normal. Like uh, first started in school, and now I'm learning it in the in the university. So, like in Moscow State University. And uh, like I, the thing I noticed is like most Russians don't speak English that well, but you speak really, really well. Oh, oh because what, what do you? What well, do it's you... going to be my job, <laughs> <laughs> and probably it will be the only thing <laughs> I will be able to do. <laughs> okay, so you went full into it, yeah. Yeah. But what made your schooling in English different from let's say an average Russians? Uh, I mean, oh my God, school like. high school and uh, yeah you said you start learning uh, in you know, school right? i i uh had a good teacher mm-hmm. and uh, made the uh, classes uh, more interesting mm-hmm. so um, maybe that's the reason and i didn't know what uh, i'm interested in uh, besides languages okay. like and then maybe something like design or architecture or things like that but languages seem to, seem to me like yeah more interesting like more interesting and easier maybe yeah and how was it how has it mgu been the linguistic uh, department there so mgu for the people who don't know is like the big best biggest greatest oldest university yes, in russia the oldest university in russia yeah and how how does how does it feel to be from mgu Uh, is it all is it hyped out to be okay. that's one question oh, i need to ask you yes yeah, it's hyped out <laughs> <laughs> well you know um okay uh i remember that first month i like didn't fully realize <laughs> oh yeah i'm walking and i'm seeing in the main building and oh mm-hmm. yeah i started here <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> it just dawned up well, on you yeah because you know the picture is like uh kind of a like too popular and uh, it uh, like didn't seem real at the okay. first time but um i think it's um uh, it's okay and it's okay to study in another place as well so yeah it's not well there are some advantages of in it but like i oh in my faculty i don't know <laughs> <laughs> okay um maybe that the professors are mm-hmm. like uh, real professionals uh and uh, for example uh the president of my faculty uh Svetlana Terminasova uh was the first one 
to speak about intercultural communication in Soviet Union and in Russia. Mm -hmm. So, and like, I, I was uh, attending your classes and mm. uh, things like that. I don't know. I, I think that studying in like big universities is more about professors because you uh, learn from people who write those textbooks and right. they, yeah, and they share their experience as well. So that's that's pretty cool and. How is your class makeup? Is it does it have enough trans in internationals or is it just Russians? Uh, yeah, there are some like uh, mostly China, uh, but we do not study with them like in one. Oh, okay. Uh, so they have separate classes yeah, going separate. on for them. But you know, uh, we had uh, guys from Kazakhstan and Tajikistan, mm -hmm. and we and they studied with us because they knew Russian. So, mm, okay, so they're not considered fully inostransive. Yes, so like they could study with the uh, Chinese students, mm -hmm. but they, uh, to uh, they like wanted to study with the Russians. So right, and you said you're also learning French. Yeah. So is that part of your course, or, or so you do you learn two languages at the same time yes, when you're studying linguistics uh, in MGO? Well, yeah, in linguistics you you need to have two languages okay like uh, the main one like is english and uh, that's your french major is, yeah uh, well it's like my first language okay and french is my second four language so oh. you can also take a third language but oh. uh, most of the times it, you need to pay for it ah okay can i ask a question if you are looking to study let's say central asian language like uzbeki or Tajiki. Mm -hmm. Do they teach those at Russian universities? Yes, but not in my faculty. Uh, okay, um, there is a Institute of uh, African and Asian Studies, uh -huh. Asian and African Studies, uh, in uh, my sister uh, studies there. In your city? It's no, it's Mo in Mo it's in Moscow. It's oh, Moscow it's... State University. Okay. Uh, yes, and. Uh, uh, there is like Uzbek language and mm. uh, Kazakh language, but um, not that frequent. Like uh, like one year is Kazakh language, next year is really? uh, Uzbek language. Yes, but um, like most people uh, go there to study Chinese or Japanese or uh, Arab language. So. Mm. That's interesting because I, I noticed that like the most amount of immigrants that come to Moscow mm. do come from these Central Asian countries. And that is one population which has the most amount of interaction with the Russian speak, speaking population too. But mm. since they already know Russian, there is no incentive mm. for the Russian population to mm -hmm. learn those languages. So I was just curious if universities also teach these languages because Ruden, you can find almost all European, not all the major European mm -hmm. languages, but they don't teach Turkish, they don't teach any of the, really? yeah, Milana was looking for Turkish, she couldn't find it. And the East Asian languages too, they do teach, they do mm -hmm. teach Arabic, but Turkish and the Central Asian languages doesn't have a market, it seems, mm -hmm. in Russia, so I was just wondering. Um, also in Gimo, I think I've heard that uh, Gimo is like, they have um, more languages than any other university in Russia. Like they teach more languages. Mm. Yes. By MGMO, you mean the one for diplomats? For diplomats. Yeah. The one in Yugo Sapna, is yes. that the one? Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, but I don't know. <laughs> French is quite enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's really good. And how has been living in Moscow for you? I, I, I usually ask this question to all Nostranza students, but since you're not from Moscow and since you're not ethnic Russian in quotes, oh. Okay. How has been the Moscow I experience? I think that Moscow is such a great city for your, like, uh, for young people. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I want to stay here, like, in, like after 30 years or something, uh, because you need to earn <laughs> for a living. And um, the rhythm is quite, like, hectic. <laughs> but, really? Uh, but... When you're a student and your parents help you, uh, and there is so much things to like explore, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so many people to meet with, I think it's like really the best city in Russia for young people. Mm. That's true. 
And how, how does it feel to, you know, not be surrounded by people that kind of speak your same language in a way? Because I, I kind of have to go through that because there are very few Indians here and there is even less Indians who actually speak my language. Since you have your own, I believe you have your own language, right? Yeah. And it's called? Karachai Balkar language. So because and, uh, there is also Balkar people uh-huh. in neighbor republic. Okay. And we have the same language, like different dialects, but ah. the same language. Oh, how, in your own language, what would you call that language? Karachai uh, Balkar. That, that's the name of the language? Uh, yes. And in Russian, how do you call the language? Karachai Balkar. Well, we can also call it Taulu. Taulu? Taulu. Taulu means uh, like mountain, like a uh, Ma- like it's an adjective okay. <laughs> or mountain <laughs> mountainous mountainous maybe yeah because yeah. like uh Tawlu adam is like uh mount, mount adam uh, mountainous adam uh, like adam is a human Aha. so uh, okay the one who lives in mountains so it's like uh the name of it uh, one of the names of it in our language so for the lang your language you mean yeah Ah. Like Taucha is, uh, you can say it like, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, uh, my Muslim is the Putinese. You can you can speak a little bit yeah, of like, Russian. I, I, yeah, I'm a three language so, uh, in my head <laughs> at the same br- time. Let's bring in French too. <laughs> <Make No. it laughs> uh, okay, uh, how I feel about it? Like, I, yeah, like I don't have people speaking my language. Yeah. Okay, first of all, I lived with my sister and uh, I met with my cousins as well, Mm -hmm. like for long, uh, quite often. And uh, as I was, I was raised in, uh, not in Kerchachachachia, so I'm used to it. So where were you raised? Uh, Pitygorsk. And that is like Russian speaking? Yes, it's, uh, there were a lot of nationalities, but it's a Russian speaking town okay in Stavropolsky Krai. so and so, uh, it's considered to be the capital of uh, North Caucasus federal district okay so you said a few terms here you said cry you said federal district and yeah. there's a lot of complex things about how Russia divides its yeah. territory that we are going to talk about so let's start on that so it's all yours, because I read on it, but you are more qualified than me to explain okay. how Russia is divided uh, into... Russia has several uh, federal districts, and one of them is uh, North Caucasus. And uh, I think I should speak about like uh, names of regions as well. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Uh, there are Obas, Kreis, and... Uh, Autonomous districts, autonom- autonomous oblasts, and republics. So, uh, actually, uh, republics differ from others because uh, republics have their own constitution, mm-hmm. and others like they have their own uh, legislation, but not constitution. Okay. And uh, republics, um, uh, like they have specific nationalities. What could you define nationality? For an international audience, nationality yeah. means I'm Indian, so that's my nationality. Like, yeah. So you are Russian, uh, so that would yeah, be your nationality. Uh, ne- ethnicity. Like, ethnicity. Okay, yeah. fine. So uh, there are also um, autonomous uh, districts. They have their own ethnicity as well, but their rights are different. As I know, they uh, don't have a right to establish a state language, Mm -hmm. to establish their own state language, and I think they also can't have their own constitution. Okay. So. What difference does it make, having your own constitution and not having your own constitution? uh, About constitution, I don't know, because, um, you know, Russia is a federal uh, state, Mm -hmm. but actually uh, the regions don't have that many rights like i know uh in the usa right like every state uh, is like uh, has its own legislation yeah it's like a different country sometimes right. but 
In Russia, it's pretty the, pretty the same, to be honest. In terms of rights, but yes. in terms of the kinds of people that live yeah. there, it can be considered like a different country. Yes. And uh, in constitution, republic, when you, there's watch republic and and uh, state mm-hmm. in parentheses. So. Mm-hmm. And um, the difference is also that uh, the head of the republic is called president. Mm-hmm. And uh, in other in other regions, it's uh, gubernator. It's gubernator, like gov- governor. Governor, yes. Mm-hmm. So, and yeah, we have uh, like our own state languages. In so all republics have their own state languages. Yes. So by definition, if you're a republic, you should have your own language. Well, you, I, I think that you can establish language. Okay. Yeah. So, for example. Uh, Tatarstan, I think mm-hmm. it's... Uh, Tatarsky? Uh, yeah, uh, they have Tatarsky and... Um, I don't know uh, what uh, the situation right now, but like a few years ago, uh, there was kind of a conflict because um, learning Tatar language in schools was obligatory mm-hmm. and for all the children, like Russians as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, so for an international audience, Russians as well, that's kind of confusing for us because we consider all of you guys to okay. be Russians. So let's just make that clear. By ethnicity, there's Russians, Russians yes. and then by nationality, there's also Russians. Well, I mean, we will speak about ethnicities as well. <laughs> uh, uh, ethnicities, I think, mostly because like we speak about Russia, right. like all of them are Russian, like, like Russian but... When I will say Russian, I'll mean like ethnical. Ethnic, ethnic. Yeah. So that's the thing. In English, there isn't a word for this. But in Russian, there is like Ruski and Rasiski. Uh, yeah, Ruski so, and Russian. Uh, yeah, so Ruski actually means people of East Slavic origin who've yeah. been like from the European part of Moscow, like Moscow, mm-hmm. Volgograd, and all, no, sorry, Moscow, mm-hmm. Novograd, Kiev. People of these areas. That's the Ruski. Rasiski mm-hmm. is like the blanket term for all the people that live in the uh, yeah. Russian Federation. Like uh, anybody who can, who's a citizen. Of the of Russian Russia. Federation. Yeah. So that can be a guy from Dagestan. He can be a Rasiski. Yeah. A woman from... Um, yeah, and if you like, if you get a citizenship, you'll also be a Rasiski. Yeah. So. yeah. So in this context, when you said uh, Russians, you mean the ethnic Russians. Yes. The people of... The Slavic origin. Yeah. Carry on. And uh, I know that in Tatarstan, um, uh, they uh, also make uh, like uh, official information is uh, often uh, written or said in Tatar language in both in Tatar and Russian. Mm-hmm. So I think that the series of uh, they are like mother tongue. Uh, is like the strongest in Tatarstan okay. like, rather than in other republics. And um, if we speak about Karachay Cherkessia, there are four title nations. That's why it's like it's a small republic but a lot of nationalities. And title nations means a subdivision in a, uh, in a yeah. republic. Yeah, uh, like title. Ethnic, uh, also based on ethnicities. Yeah. Yes, ethnicities. Okay. So, so you're saying there are like four different ethnicities in Karachay Turkesia? Yeah, I mean, there are like four titles, like four the uh, ones who lived there like before Russia took <laughs> this place. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, these are Karachay, mm-hmm. uh, Cherkes people, uh-huh. uh, Abaza, uh-huh. uh, like Bizinci or in Russian and uh, Nogai people. Okay. So. So which one do you belong to? Uh, Karachay. Karachay. Okay. Uh, like it's uh, like the biggest part. The majority. Yeah, the popula- majority. Po- population. Yeah. But there are also Russians, Armenians, Ukrainians, uh, I don't know German, anybody. Hmm. So. But like the title nations are the ones who live there for a long time. Ah, okay. Like, um, how do you say? The people who were living there before it was integrated to the Russian Empire yeah. and after that the Soviet Union. Yeah. Okay. So can, can I say like the Soviet republics right... I mean, sorry, the Russian republics right now, like mm-hmm. Tatarstan or Yos or Dagestan, are what 
was previously the role played by Soviet republics like Azerbaijan's Republic, Turkmen's Republic, Ukraine's Republic, because that was like also a part, a division of the Soviet Union based solely on ethnic mm-hmm. and linguistic lines. I don't know. Is, it, is this like an analog for that? Maybe, but... because, you know, uh, before it became republics, most of republics were called uh, autom- autonomous oblasts. Mm-hmm. So, These are Soviet times, you're saying? Yes. Okay. Uh, and right now there is only one autonomous oblast. It's Jewish autonomous oblast. Yes. In... In the east. Very east. Uh, like, uh, Mongolia, Kazakhstan. Uh, uh, no, it's like far east. Mm. Uh, yeah, and uh, I've uh, well, I've read it like in Russia that um, besides uh, the Israel, it's the only uh, official like territory for Based Jewish people. For Jewish people, yeah. yeah. For Jewish people. And do you know the interesting? Their flag is like the LGBT flag. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of confusing. It's like a rainbow colored flag, and it is like how do you say it? the after World War Two? It's like it was a Soviet Union solution to a, a nation state in a way for mm-hmm. the Jewish population, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, they they didn't live there. Like, yeah, but no, but nobody lived there. No, uh, it wasn't there like. Mother, uh, motherland. Yeah, it, yeah, it didn't have any historical significance for the Jewish population in yeah. Eastern Europe. Or... Well, there were some people uh, in that territory, but not Jewish. Yeah. And not Russian. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's it, Dude, it's like really far. It's like yeah. almost after Siberia, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, and uh, I, I'm not that uh, good in uh, Soviet legislation, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Made sure them about the, the rights of it. So, but yes, I think that the rights have changed since that time. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I think it's pretty the same. Like Azerbaijan and Armenia was in um, Soviet uh, Union, and mm-hmm. now all, like Dagestan is. In Russia, so yeah, like uh, in terms of constitution and uh, state language, mm-hmm. like the same rights, I think. So, could you also explain to us what a cry is? Because it's not an English okay. term. You don't understand what cry uh, means. You know, I, I found two versions of it, and um, I thought cry is a region, uh, which includes an autonomous oblast or a republic. For example, uh, Krasnodarsky Krai, uh, it had a Degea Republic mm-hmm. inside of it. And Stavropolsky Krai had a Karachay Cherkesia included in it. Karachay mm-hmm. Cherkesia it was called an autonomous oblast mm-hmm. back then. So, yeah. And I've heard another explanation that uh, Krai, um, they called uh, Krai's places which were like in the edge of Russian Empire. So, because like uh, Stavropolsky Krai during the uh, Caucasian War was like in, in the on the edge. Oh, it was like a border. Yes. Okay. But Krai literally means that, right? Like yeah. a border. Yes. That's how yeah. Ukraine is like Krai. Uh, Ukraine, uh, uh, Ukraine, like, uh, yeah. Yeah, also it also has like that, edge. that root or something, like yeah, Krai but, in it. But uh like it actually um, sounds offensive for Ukrainian people because if you say it's a cry yeah, because you know <laughs> okay because Kraina means a country for them right? oh okay in and ukraine yes language. and uh, they do not agree that Ukraina comes from a Kraina, like edge of russia ah, okay. and i uh, know there is another like thin thing um how would you say in Russian in Ukraine? Na Ukraine. Yeah, and most of people will say na Ukraine, but uh, we say na when it's like a it's not like yeah or like, an island. like it's a island or a region maybe, but in countries like with other countries we always say v like yeah. for France, for yeah. Italy, and things like that. So um, and uh, it's kind of more polite. Oh, really? To say Ukraine. 
Really? Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Because when we learn in Podfak, we are like na kube. Yeah. Na Austri- Australia. Mm. No, I think Australia is like bigger, so maybe. Australia is not considered. Of, 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 but I thought Australia. all islands were considered na. I don't know. Uh, it's so uh, a little bit. Dude, that's complicated the... like in French there is also such a thing <laughs> really yeah because uh, there are several words for uh-huh. v, na, like uh, on and in uh-huh. like un, o, dun, and like uh, it depends on uh, is it a feminine or masculine uh. and uh, is it an island or how far is it this island oh, and God. things like that <laughs> So yeah. Yeah, so it's 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 a nightmare learning that part of Russian, but it's it's not very complicated. So in Russian, when you say in the English word in, we can use v yeah. and na depending on what kind of landmass it is. Mm-hmm. As far as I understood it, so if it's like an island like Cuba, you say na kube, na kube, sorry, na kube, yeah. and if it's like a big country like the Indi, like in India, yeah. so that um, predlog. How do you say predlog in English? Uh, preposition. Yeah, a preposition. Yeah, preposition. A preposition. Yeah. The preposition depends on the landmass, what yeah. kind of landmass it is. So that's why you use na and ver. But in the case of Ukraine, mm-hmm. it seems it's like a. Because yeah, it comes from word like uh, Ukraine, na Ukraine. We say we do not say ver Ukraine. So Ukraine literally means like a borderland, right? Yeah. So in Russian, so uh, Ukraine was considered like the. Westernmost edge of the Russian Empire. Oh, I think considered in past tense. It's quite complicated uh, because uh, Russia, after Razdrobnes, uh, I know this word in. Razdrobnes. Uh, when uh, a lot of counts, like princes, Knyaz, you call it in Yeah, Knyaz. Uh, like there became too much like people with power and mm-hmm. everybody wanted to develop their own land mm-hmm. so uh, there was no like a united Russia right and then the Mongolians came oh yeah and uh, everything was like uh, it was like the golden horde time and... yes so and it was uh, it, it depended on uh, Mongolia, like Tatara Mongolia or Tata, something. Yeah, Tatara Mongolia. I think Batu Han was the... Yes, Batu Han, uh, Han Bati also Han Bati, yeah. was one who attacked Russia for so, the first time. So during this time, all the small kniases were like uh, vassal states for the Mongol uh, yeah, golden horde. But, yeah, they like, um, they would... They uh, depended more financially on yeah. it. So like... Uh, they had to pay but taxes. They, we, yes, but they were not assimilated to Mongolian, to Mongolia, yeah. uh, Mongolian or, or Tatar or culture. So, yeah. And um, after, like, when uh, Mongolia uh, was not that strong and uh, Russian, like, knights of princes started to unite uh, it back, they did not unite all the territories and right. some of them uh were left like like ukraine or belarus like uh, they were just <laughs> living their own life or okay. uh, or uh, maybe in poland sometimes uh-huh. because we had a lot of wars with uh, the poland polish. with mm-hmm. the polish people yeah and um ukraine and belarus uh like always like yeah, they're sometimes Polish, they're sometimes Russian. Right. So, um, and the status of it, like, quite complicated. And uh, Russia tried to take uh, all, all of it, like, by pieces. Like, every war, like, with Turkey, with Poland, they just took more and more uh-huh. uh, parts of Ukraine and uh, Belarus and... Not all, not only Ukraine and Belarus, but also Moldova mm-hmm. and things like that, because with Turkey and think and uh, a lot of wars with Turkey, and actually, uh, the last pieces of Ukraine came during the Second World War. 
so us more than the ukraine you mean yeah the like most the whole, east like most western parts of it yes the western part uh i i think i'm not sure about it but lvov i think it was polish like mm. uh well not polish but ethnicity but part but of it, the polish uh, yes polish uh, hungarian or polish lithuanian common law polish uh i'm not sure that polish lithuanian state existed, existed during at that time. yeah poland uh, was Poland is a Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. So, but yeah, what were we speaking about? Yeah, you know, Christ, speaking Christ. About... Yeah, you're defining yeah, what Kai was. Okay, and um, to be honest, like there is no uh, difference in like legislation and uh, like rights in between Christ, Albus, uh, and autonomous. Districts, so republic is one who stands uh, out of it, and so right and mm. so so can can I say like republics are like the most autonomous uh, legislative divisions in the Russian Federation, the ones with yeah. the most autonomy. Well, uh, in principle, in, yes, in fact, it's not <laughs> autonomous. So, um, also, well. I think I should speak about North Caucasus. And uh, uh, let me let me let us just list all the divisions one more time. Okay. So first we have uh, Oblast. Mm-hmm. I think it's like like most uh, popular <laughs> or something. Uh, okay. Could like, you an uh, example uh, of an Oblast? Uh, Oblast. Moscovsky Oblast. Moscovsky Oblast. So that's like part of Russia where it's ethnically mainly Russian. Yes. Mainly, like there isn't a particular ethnic group which yeah. has a history they in that don't area. have their own constitution but they have like legislation and uh, their own laws but not constitution right so that's uh, an oblast oblast second uh, um cry cry like you told it's mm. it can have uh for example the stravloposky cry has your republic plus other areas to it too yeah well now uh does uh, doesn't depend on it uh-huh. but um, back in soviet union uh, ah. it was kind of a part of it so okay that's a cry okay, yeah and third one um cry uh autonomous uh districts and they are also national but they have less rights like they have just rights just like oblast has okay uh an autonomous republic is an autonomous oblast sorry mm-hmm. it's like the jewish, it's jewish. The only that, one. there's only one yeah. that's an exceptional case um uh, republics and there are also cities of federal importance which are saint petersburg moscow and sevastopol sevastopol right what so are, are these like City, these cities are so big and so economically uh, important that the government decided yeah, to give Moscow them the is a, big metropolis. Is capital, yeah. yeah. Um, Saint Petersburg as well, and Sevastopol. Sevastopol is actually a small town, but it's important because uh, after the annexation of Crimea, it became like the it plays for. Uh, it's like a power projection for, project. Yes, and uh, before. Uh, 2014 um the fleet of russia uh, mm-hmm. black sea fleet was situated in uh, novorossiysk and now as i remember it's in sevastopol novorossi where is that city uh krasnodarsky Krai. oh okay it's like black sea it's uh, like where sochi ah okay fine yeah 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 i think it was like kind of a symbol yeah of, symbolic you know power projection yeah making it like giving it just showing like we value this area so much yeah. by making it uh Crimea is also like very interesting region what Crimea is a republic yeah it's right a republic now? uh it's interesting for its history because like um, yeah there's like Crimea and tatars yeah part of the I to- mean, uh, like russians uh when um uh, uh, when uh, Crimea became a part of Russia again. Uh, you mean in 2014 or before that? Uh, 14. Uh, mm-hmm. um, like people like, uh, tend to say that it is historically Russian territory. But it was historically Greek. It was yeah. historically Turkish. Turkish. 
It was part of the like, canon. Uh, it, because it's like such a um, place, like a uh, uh, sport, like strategy yeah. wars. So uh, it was like quite comfortable for people to take it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, first was Greek and uh, so yeah. Uh, I hope you will. Uh, you will re- record uh, about Crimea as well because it's really very yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, I, I know a guy from Crimea. I will invite him pretty yeah. soon into it. So, so that's about the different legislative divisions in Russia. I think you got a good idea about it. So now let's go on to the Caucasus, because a fr- if I'm being honest, I told you this before. Before Khabib Numa Numa. Khabib Nur Muhammadov, God, mm-hmm. I didn't know that there were a Muslim population living in Russia because oh. the projection of how the Russian culture, at least to how I was exposed mm-hmm. to it in India, was this mainly Christian, Slavic speaking yeah. country without any other divisions. But once I came here, I sort of realized that there's so much diversity in the Caucasus. There are actually Buddhists living in Kalmykia, yeah. Tuvan, Buryati, and all those places, and the Siberian uh, pagan religions and all mm-hmm. that, which was really, uh, really surprising for me. So please enlighten us on the Caucasus because it's okay. for me the most interesting uh, part of Russia. Caucasus, uh, okay, uh, it includes uh, Stalopolsky Krai and uh, republics of the Republic of uh, Dagestan, mm-hmm. Chechnya, Ingushetia, North Ossetia, uh, Kabardina Balkaria, mm-hmm. and Karachay Cherkessia. These all constitute the like the uh, Russian the part of like, the Caucasus. Uh, yes. Okay. So um, yeah. So Krasnodar can be considered part of the Caucasus? It's not a part of Caucasus, like, uh, like speaking about uh, the administration, but uh-huh. well, when you come there, there were also mountains, uh, they cook uh, shashlik as well, okay. so there were Caucasian people, and yeah, like, people would say that Sochi is Caucasus because, like, it looks like Caucasus <laughs> on the map. Yeah. But, uh, where is Sochi again? Ne- um, next to this um like here or something it's Kerch. no mm. no that's crimea yeah? uh, it's no krasnoda oh yeah there it is sochi so sochi is like famous because of the olympics happening there yeah in 24 20, 20, 12 12 yeah 2012 olympics so that's uh, that's the first Caucasus city that I knew mm-hmm. with, uh, before coming to Russia. So what makes Caucasus different from the rest of Russia? Okay, uh, as I said, it, uh, like, there are a lot of nationalities all over the Russia, but uh, ca- Caucasians are the ones who do not really assimilate that much with Russians. So, um, okay, like there is also like Saha people, like even look different. Saha? As a Yakutia. Oh yeah, yeah. Saha, that's like Siberia, yeah. very east. Okay, but um, I don't know much about it, but maybe maybe it's just because they're not that famous <laughs> for different things. Uh, and uh, what makes Caucasus different? Because it's uh, not much land, actually, but a lot of different ethnicities. What do you attribute that to? Why is there so many different people in such a small uh, l- land area? I don't even know, actually. Uh, is it because it's secluded because of... So this area is mainly mountainous, if yes, I'm not mistaken. because like, they were like kind of isolated from yeah, each isolated. other. Yeah, so. isolated. So that, did that, was that the reason why there's so many subgroups divided yeah. and have their own idiosyncratic cultures develop from it because yeah. maybe because of the isolation because in the Caucasus it's not easy to go from one area to the other yes that's true even uh, like living in one region you like need to go through mountains yeah <laughs> so and uh, the road is a little bit uh, difficult mm-hmm. so yeah 
and uh, most of these republics are like a Muslim like uh, there is no an official uh, religion but like people mo most of Caucasian people are Muslim the exception is uh, Ossetia it's just next to the border with Georgia if yeah. I'm not mistaken and uh, they're mostly Christian mm -hmm. uh, it uh, differs a little bit with like Russian Orthodox uh, Church mm -hmm. Uh, and they also have like a, like pieces of a pagan. Uh, you mean Ossetia? Yes. Okay. Like, uh, all of like people in Russia, like Russians as well, have pagan uh, customs. Yeah. Like, still. Like, like Maslenitsa. Yes, like Maslenitsa and things like that. Uh. I mean, just that uh, in Caucasus, like in the States and Georgia and Armenia as well, their church is a little bit different from mm. uh, the Russian Orthodox Russian, Church. Yeah. And about Muslims, it's uh, Sunni, uh, Sunni Muslims. So, mm -hmm. uh, like, and. Uh, if I may ask, how did Caucasus become Islamic? What part of your history was this? Okay. Islamic. Where, where did uh, Islam come from? Um, I think that the first people to to convert to Islam were Dagestan. Mm. So th you're saying they were in Christians before, or they did it weren't religious before? Oh, that's an interesting question <laughs> because you said convert. I that's convert, where I like okay. Um, um, they say it's Turkish influence, like like the most popular version is mm -hmm. a Turkish influence and um, and I think that most of Caucasus became Muslim not that many years ago like three or four hundred years so yeah that's, that's kind of much. recent past yeah not very um, and some people say that uh, Karachai people as well were Christian Mm -hmm. before it because there were a lot of christian uh temples okay like o orthodox over, part uh, of the russian church or was it like uh, the georgian different I, version of christianity I, it looks like uh the architecture is like georgian oh ah, like, okay uh, so uh but i think that now uh like the ones of them like um uh, which are uh still like good mm -hmm. uh they're like in russian church mm. i think okay so uh but uh, paganism like uh, they were pagans all of them uh but different pagans uh karachai uh it's a turkic ethnicity so and uh okay so I'm sorry to cut you off, but okay. I am I'm really difficult trying to understand what is a Turkic ethnicity. Because I okay. every time I read it, there are Turkic tribes, Turkic languages, okay. Turkic ethnicity. First association I make is Turkey as okay. a country, but that is not true. It yeah. is something else. Could you explain on that, please? Okay, like there are so many languages in the world. There are like language families. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, uh, the biggest one is Indo Aryan. Yes, in the European, in the European, and there is also Altai family, mm -hmm. and in Altai family there is a Turkic group. Uh, Turkic group is like, and in Turkic group there is Turkish, Azerbaijan, Karachay Balkar language, Crimea language, uh, Kazakh language, uh, Saha language, Chuvash language, Uyghur language, like. A lot Whoa. of them, like but it's big. Imagine the area that you're talking yeah, about. Altai like is in a different Turkey, part. Yeah, and, and uh, Turkey is like almost Europe. Yeah, like you know, Baikal Lake. Yeah, yeah it's, that's it's, that's where Altai is. Language. Like Baikal is the so, Turkish So word. that's the origin of origin for all the languages which are spoken in Azerbaijan, yeah. Turkey. Yeah, like uh, all of them are Turkic, but um, differ of mm -hmm. course because. Uh, once uh, which are in Siberia, they are more difficult to be understood. So, like, because they were isolated. Mm -hmm. And uh, once uh, who in the south, like Turkish, Azerbaijan, and uh, Karachay, like, they are, were a little bit influenced by Arabic and Persian. 
Ah, okay. Because Iran is not that far away. Yeah, because of、uh, trade, because of religion. Right. Yeah, and especially Turkish and Azerbaijan, like so many words are <laughs> actually Arab and、uh, Persian there. So yeah. Okay.、Um, speaking about Turkish, a、uh, Turkic people. Yeah. Um, like the most common religion was Tengri. Religion. I I'm not sure how it's said in English.、Uh, how is it in Russian? Tangrianstva. Tangrianstva. I never heard of it. Let me just check、yeah. that out. Oh, is it like a version of paganism or? Yeah, it... it's paganism.、Oh. Well, they say that there is like a monotheist,、uh, oh. like form of it, but I'm not sure about it. Like you know.、Um, did I write it right? Tangrianstva. Tangrian. So. I think it will correct it a little bit. What? T Tan. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. Tan Griansta. No, not Tan. No. Tan Griansta. T Yen. Yen. Okay. Hey, let me just、okay. type it. <laughs>、yeah. uh, but okay, I don't have. <laughs> yeah, where's T? I don't have like a Russian keyboard. I train myself. Okay,、too. where is it? Okay, T. Okay, just tell me E by letter by letter. Um, Tan. No, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like in Russian.、Oh, yeah, okay. okay. <laughs>、uh, N. Uh huh. G. Uh huh. R. Uh huh. Oh yeah, there、uh-huh. it is. Tengrianstvo. Tengrism is an ancient ethnic and state Turco-Mongolic religion originating in Central Asia, and duration steps based on folk shamanism, monotheistic at the imperial level. Do is it like some Mongol religion which Genghis Khan used to follow around that time? <laughs> I think it's close. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere around、oh, that. I, 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 but it's like know, shamanism, you know, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I don't、uh, learn much about it. Uh huh. Uh, there.、Uh, Does it have anything to do with the locket you're wearing? Mm, mm, well, some people say that it, it has like connection with paganism. Uh huh. But、uh, it's just a symbol of、uh, our nationality. Oh, is it? And, and ethnicity, yes. So,、um, like as I said. There was、uh, like some pieces of that culture left、uh-huh. uh, in all the Caucasus. No, no, these are like more about Turk, Turkic, like、uh, Karachay and Balkaria. So yeah,、oh, and, uh, in Kazakhstan also,、uh-huh. um, you know that such celebrations as、uh, Saban to- Sabantuy and Navrustoy. Is it Na- Navrus? I know. Na- yeah, like they're also like. They they pagan. Oh, is it? Yeah, celebrations. I thought I thought Nowruz was like Islamic. It's not. No, it's not. But it's kind of like Persian New Year. Yeah. And it's well, from. Okay, can you Google、uh, yeah, for、sure. uh, Nowruz? Sure.、Right. It it can have Persian roots, to be honest. But、uh... Nowruz. Oh, what Nowruz? Mm. Is the Iranian New Year also known as Persian New Year, which began in the spring equinox, marking the first day of. Farvardin, the first、mm-hmm. month of the Iranian solar calendar. Yeah, I think it's it has pagan roots、uh, too. Like it, yeah,、oh. pagan roots and and Saban Sabantui, like in Tatar was Sabantui in、uh, our language it was it we was Sabantoi. It's Saban,、uh, Sabantui. Yeah. It, it who celebrates the Sabantui? Ah,、uh, Tatar people mostly. Tata, it, it's it, uh, quite popular. Um, Kazakh people. We also have it, but we do not actually celebrate it. <laughs> like、mm. we just know it exists. It's it's a day in your calendar. Ah、uh, no, like it's not official. Ah okay.、Uh, so this is interesting. And so all of these are like specific to the Turkic groups. Yeah. Oh. Okay. That's really interesting. And、uh, of course there was、um, pagan things in other. Any ethnicities as well, but、uh, I just do not know much about it.、Mm-hmm. Uh, another interesting thing is a、uh, Narski epos, ep- like、uh, what is that? It's like legends about Narts. Narts. Narts, yeah.、Uh, Narts were like、uh, people from legends, like、uh, so. And、uh, this thing、uh, is like told in. Many nationalities, 
and Karchechia and Kabardina Balkaria and Ossetia and uh, Chechnya and uh, like and all of them except Dagestan there is uh, not legends say so there were not legends what does that word mean uh, is it like peep some kind uh, of people uh yes yeah, like it's like Maybe like it would be rude to say uh, to compare it with uh, Atlantida or something. Atlantis. N- n- like you know, like strong people who lived many many years ago. Ah. Something like that. You can Google it. Okay. <laughs> Na- Narski epos. Narski. Or, or Narte. Nar. Which. Narte. Te. No, just te. Uh-huh. And what Narte? Narte. Dog sled. Uh it. no, it's like it's construction, not Narski Epos. Okay. A Narski Epos. That means an age, right? Mm-hmm. Would you mind if I switch this to English? Mm-hmm. Oh no, just yeah. The Nart saga yeah. is are a series of tales originating from the North Caucasus. They form much of the basic mythology of the ethnic groups in the area, including Ab Abazin, Abkhaz, Circassian, Ossetian, Karachabakar, and to some extent Chechen English and folklore. Oh, so these are this is like some epic yeah like, oh and all the groups in the Caucasus share this most, to some extent most of them I think that Dagestan doesn't show it uh-huh uh, Dagestan it's all a bit different from others to be honest oh so this is interesting yeah like uh, what kind of story is it is it like some like uh, about how or they defended their land from enemies mm-hmm. and things like that. So, mm. Yeah. And and how does this connect to the Turkic thing? I mean, uh, it's also connected with paganism, uh-huh. but it is spread all over the Caucasus. So. Oh, okay. Interesting. So let's just wind back. Islam come in the Turkic language group. And what happens after that to the North Caucasus? Uh, Islam influences Caucasus, so mm-hmm. um, more Arab words. Mm-hmm. Uh, so would it be fair to say your language is more similar to Turkish and Azerbaijani than to Russian? Of course. <laughs> like, it's uh, it's completely different from Russian. Like, uh, Russian is an Indo-European yeah. language and uh, Karachev Alkara is... A Turkic and Altai oh. language, so it's like completely different. So would you be able to, f- in f- f- for example, if you're learning Turkish, you would find it more easier because yeah. it's similar to your native language? Uh, yes, because, um, you know, uh, sometimes I've watched Turkish films mm-hmm. and in the beginning, you it's not that easy, but then like uh, in a couple of months, you can just not watch uh, the subtitles. Uh, the t- yeah, the subtitles. You, it's it'll just easier to memorize all the phrases, all the constructions when you already understand like twenty percent of it. Mm. Like it just becomes becomes easier. So yeah. Well, I think that that is why, like, how do you say, South Cock I and mean, North Caucasus mm. is like a big market for Turkish media. Turkish films and serials Maybe, and but not Pe- all of them are Turkish. I think uh, the uh, the popularity of uh, Turkish uh, films is not about language but about culture because how um you know like they show uh the picture which is more close to Caucasus than like the Hollywood films maybe. What about Russian? And uh, Russian as well, because, um, like, different principles of living in Caucasus and in Russia, because Caucasus is more conservative, right? like Turkey. And Russia is, is considered more progressive, like right. more European. Right. Yeah, and uh, so Turkey com- um, seems a little bit closer to... Mm. The principles and values of the North Caucasus yeah. is that based. What what would you base that on? The is it like the more conservative um, 
Tachinia. It's a more conservative vibe of Islam yeah. that Turkish Islam and... Islam and I think uh, it happens to all isolated ethnicities. Like they are more isolated, uh, they are more conservative. And that's why they do not assimilate that much. Mm-hmm. To yeah. the dominant social and yeah. cultural group. So, yeah. yeah. Because I noticed that, like, it's pretty defined, the difference between the Russians and the Caucasians, if I may use that term. Yeah, I mean, I just... even, in, even in the mindsets of the people, yeah. what they kind of value. What they can do, how they dress. Uh, yeah, how they carry themselves. It, yeah. Even for, from a foreigner's perspective, too, it's, you can kind of easily kind of draw that distinction. And I can draw more connections between my friend from Dagestan and my friend from Azerbaijan than from my friend from Dagestan and a guy from it's, uh, Russia. Maybe it's kind of a stereotype, but it's true that, well, uh, like, average like Caucasian girl will prefer wearing uh, long uh, skirts or mm-hmm. something or, and uh, maybe an average Caucasian uh, guy would not wear pink uh, clothes or like F- feminine, feminine, yeah, right. feminine uh, items, you know. So, yeah. Well, there are exceptions, of course. Right. Like, people are not like the same, but uh, like it's an average picture right that's really interesting so let's talk about a little bit of the history what what how was the Caucasus before it became part of the Russian Empire was it all small kingdoms or was it part of a different empire um I uh, like uh, people argue about it and uh, it was not a like Mm, such you know uh, official kingdom there w- there is a stratification uh, in the like the layers of society mm-hmm. there were like people who were, like more tend to uh, had more power mm-hmm. but it was not that you know official like uh, um like I I could not tell it a state. Right. It wasn't a kingdom state yes. as such. It's more of like a chief like, term, chief term, but oh, like there's this big something between it. Like there there is a stratification. Uh, they kind of have wars sometimes. Uh, they sometimes can can t- uh, connect like uh, with other countries like maybe Turkey or Persia uh-huh. but like there is there are no like organs like ministry of something right. uh, and like things like that right so yeah um like, like a little bit unclear <laughs> um but uh but were they all like different states like Dagestan was different as it is now Cherkesia was different yeah. as it is now. Kabardina Balkaria was different as it is now. Or was it kind of over these borders drawn up when they became part of the Russian Empire? Uh, I mean, the border, like the official borders, uh, changed, like several times, uh, and I, I'm not sure. Like, uh, I did not. Uh, read enough about it mm-hmm. but uh, it's kind of mm, strange <laughs> weird well, what's, what's strange uh, like uh, I know for example uh, like Karachai and Balkar people mm-hmm. are like much closer to each other uh, like with their language and culture but they live in different uh, regions and currently um, yeah mean, but before were they in one unified well, state they like like uh they w- was not a state like people was just living in different places but they uh like they married each other sometimes like mm-hmm. uh they i know they had contacts with each other right uh like but there was no in a border 
like on the mountains right. and uh, the fields border. between them. Yeah, and um, in Dagestan, for example, there are so many different, completely different people, but they live in the same region. Mm. Avar. Avar, Kumuk, uh, you know, Wak people, Lesgin people. Right. So, yeah. Mm. And yeah. so what's the situation of currently the Caucasus in Russia? Because the Caucasus is also the most post Soviet Union, where the most amount of conflicts happen yeah. in the Russian Federation. What would you attribute that to? Is it that conflicting ideologies of Russian and these different peoples and okay. some people not accepting to be want to be part of that federation? I, um, like, it's like peace and quiet, <laughs> thanks God, but... Right uh, now. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's like there are no uh, conflicts. But, of course, there are some people who would say that uh, they would better live in, like, their own state, not mm-hmm. in, not being part of Russia. But I don't think it's worth it, like, you know, with all the blood uh, that would be, <laughs> uh, all the conflicts that would happen if they would try to take their independence. What is their pretense for their independence? Why do they want an independence from the Russian state? Um, okay, uh, you mean Chechen it, Republic? Yeah, Chechen, Chechnya is the most, how do you say, uh, famous example of it. Yeah. But there are separatist movements in Dagestan and other places too. Xenophobia. <laughs> uh, like, okay. Xenophobia uh, from whom? From, which? from Russians? Like, uh, I mean, uh, they just... Uh, hated Russian people, like, uh, they uh, didn't want uh, Russian people to have power over them. Mm -hmm. Uh, Which has been the case since the Russian Empire. Yeah, but, okay, and uh, people argue about it, why the war started, and things like that, but, okay, um... I think that some um, things like uh, I think it could be c- calm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but for some reasons uh, there they happened the war, and uh, some people say that there were like more powerful people who wanted a war which was they who had profit of it mm-hmm. so and uh, i think that's actually right because people lived there like for so many years and uh, that was quite okay but like not totally okay but they did not want to kill each other all right but then mm, the war happened and uh, uh, I think that the way it started determined it, like, you know, that uh, uh, the troops of Russian army entered uh, Caucasus, mm-hmm. and uh, of course, like, for people who lived there, it it seemed like they are attacked. It's like they're being invaded. Yes, so... And they were afraid, and uh, it made it even worse that they uh, maybe before that moment, many of them like were neutral. Right. And when somebody attacks your home, right, you become aggressive. Defensive. So, yeah. Against a threat. So yeah, and um, not only Chechnya was. Uh, participating in the war many people from other regions uh, came to support it because they shared the ideas of independence they also wanted to be independent from russia but i don't know it was so much bloodshed and uh, like no profit of it like to people maybe for somebody who was selling uh was selling uh, arms right true but, but not for people but 
from a Russian perspective, the whole point of giving these regions more autonomy is so that they would feel that they w- they are not under, let's use the term, hegemony of the Russians living mm-hmm. in Moscow. But is that really the case? Even though these, like you said, it's autonomy we in cannot, paper. But we cannot know because, you know, it, it like, it's really kind of mysterious. It, it seems like, I don't know, it's like, like uh like theories, like uh, conspiracy, mm-hmm. things like that. But I, I don't think that it could be profitable for people. Like uh, after Soviet Union, uh, like was collapsed. Collapsed, yes. Um, like first years of Russian Federation were kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Like more free, to be honest. In the Yeltsin era. Uh, yes. Uh, well, Yeltsin, uh, you know about uh, the constitutional crisis in 1993? Yeah. Yeah, because before it, uh, like, was kind of communists still had some power mm. and a lot of people had more power. And uh, it was, like, maybe too much democracy for them. Like, if we for a uh, present government mm-hmm. it would be more democracy and like everything could be shown on tv right. so yes and uh some republics like chechen republics they were living their own life like a um uh, I think that uh, it was called восстановление конституционного конституционального порядка в республике. So, Literally. like uh, when they invaded Chechnya, like uh, uh, let me explain it, that they started living their own way, and I think that money in it like stayed in it. Maybe that was the reason. Oh. And they just thought, like, there's too much independence in this region. Maybe we should, like, put it back. Right. So, and uh, that's how it started. And, uh, you know, I do not know much about it. Mm -hmm. So I can make a mistake. So I'm I'm sorry (laughs) if I made it. And even, even if I didn't. There would be people who say that I, I was mistaken because uh, so many people think different things about this conflict. Right. Yeah. And what was the, what from your perspective, from your republic, what was the reaction to this I, conflict? I was like. Yeah, you know, but in, I didn't. We were I kids. Wasn't born. I, I, when the second uh, campaign mm-hmm. was in Chechnya, I think I was like. Two, two years yeah. old or thing or something, I th- I think it was, uh, two thousand two, mm-hmm. or something. Uh, I was born in, two thousand one, <laughs> so, okay. and uh, everything I know that, uh, some like, guys uh went to war and didn't come back, of it from it. So no, I mean, did the Caucasus feel like their autonomy was being? Questioned and the Russian influence by was being forced up on them, the from what was being happening in Chechnya. Oh, uh, most of, uh, most of Karachechukis people, they were quite okay with Russia. Like, but of course, some people were just sharing ideas that they should be living in a different country. So, but. There was no war in my republic, and uh, it means that like most of people did not want this independence. So, right, maybe not this way. <laughs> okay, and um, of course there are like as I said, uh, like four nationalities, and it's kind of difficult mm. to make uh, such a state. And uh, in Chechnya, it's like one. In the, uh, one oh, really? city. Oh, like, it's uh, well, majority Chechnyans. Yes. Okay. And uh, before war, there were much more Russians. Oh, okay. And uh, they ran away from it when the war started. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. 
That's a quite a complicated topic. Yeah, it is. That, that part of Caucasian history is complicated, to be honest. Because yeah. you know, from because I kind of from an Indian perspective, I'm like, I live in the Caucasus of India because our languages are different. Mm-hmm. Cultures are so different from the northern side. Northern side is Indo-Aryan language. Southern side is completely different language family group, and we kind of live like you said in a federal republic. And the the centers of power are in the north. Mm-hmm. South doesn't have those centers of power. We never had like a prime minister from the south. Mm-hmm. Even though India is very democratic, it's more democratic than Russia in the sense that people who can make a okay, it's not okay. We have had dynasties of prime ministers, but in principle, anyone from anywhere can become prime minister. But in reality, that's not the case. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. In a sense, there we do feel that when you're from the south, you are a little bit underrepresented. Like, like how I told, mm-hmm. I didn't know Muslims lived in Russia before yeah. I came to Russia. Most people don't know India speaks different languages in the south. Mm-hmm. People think it's like this one homogeneous uh, entity who speaks one language as one yeah. particular culture. So I kind of, I kind of feel, I, I can, I, I can, I can empathize a little bit with how. A person in the Caucasus would feel when their culture and identity is not represented as being Russian, and the yeah. the Moscow Saint Petersburg idea of Russia is eclipsed yeah. over them in the international field. So that's why I wanted to ask that particular question. Okay. Oh, uh, I mean, like, there is no, oh, uh, there, there is no much, uh, there's no many Caucasian. Uh, people in the federal government and is that true? I don't know. Not much, to be honest. Like uh, the ones who represent republics, mm-hmm. yes, but uh, ministers or something, I don't know. Any? Well, like there were, of course, but they're not that famous. Mm-hmm. So yeah, of course there were like uh, different that's like in uh state duma but mm-hmm. like it's their job to to represent the right. public so yeah um and some people say that um uh, in maybe films or like advertisement uh, uh like uh, we mostly see russian people and this is true like yeah like I think in films are like, more Caucasian people now. Do you guys have like a domestic film industry? Do you have like a Circassian <laughs> film industry where they make films in Circassian? Uh, I'd say no because well, there are theaters, but uh, there are films. But I know only I know documentary films and uh-huh. uh, maybe some comedies but uh, in uh, my mother tongue but uh, it's not it's not like the real film like, really that's really okay. interesting because in yeah. India every state has its own film industry and it's quite lucrative too yeah. but because we have like every state has like 50 million people willing, willing, oh, pay, we, willing to pay for it we Cuff- just have our own television uh-huh. or it's like with our news uh, or speaking about uh, the events in the republic that's all i think we get not much people to make films like. mm. and uh it's kind of a profession uh there are no much actors and directors uh, mm. in caucuses like doctors and ju- and uh, lawyers of co- uh, mostly oh <laughs> yeah like but- it seems like um for conservative societies. Oh, what it's about kind of not in the Russian industry? Are there a lot of actors from the Caucasus in the Russian? Uh, male and several, female? Several. Several of them. But I, uh, it's, um, it's a weird tendency that um, Caucasian Russian actors, like uh, mostly like uh, comedian actors, uh-huh. for some reason. I don't know. And, uh, but comedic. So they think yeah. they mainly play comedic roles. Yeah. But I don't remember 
right now I don't remember any like serious uh, Caucasian um, actors. Maybe in Soviet Union, I remember, I remember that there was a one Georgian actor who played Stalin. <laughs> What's his name? I don't remember. Oh, he played Stalin. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. So, in yeah. Interesting. And just because, uh, I don't know, there are not so much conditions for to become an actor in Caucasus. Like, in Russia, the film industry is not that good, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And Caucasus is even worse. First of all, uh, this kind of career seems uh, not very good in mm. conservative societies. And uh, the uh, financial like e- economy condition is kind of unstable. Mm-hmm. And you need to have a like a real job. <laughs> real job in quotes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So can I ask one more question? It is based on Russian. Imagine a person from the Caucasus. Mm-hmm. They le- they le- you guys learn Russian. You guys speak mm-hmm. proper Russian. And imagine a person who's Russian Russian. Mm-hmm. Who grew up in Moscow mm-hmm. and speaks Russian. If you are applying for a job, would there be sort of preference for the native Russian? Because their language skill uh... might be, I'm not saying it is, might be better. I mean, not in terms of language. Like you know, uh, most of Caucasian people like speak Russian. Which but is you just guys, like Russian. But you guys yeah. do speak Russian. But there are some accents have, like, yeah, of the Caucasus. Accents, yes. Uh, I don't know. I I didn't uh, know about such things. But of course, there are like uh, they can prefer a Russian. Like, um, on what aspects? In, in, on what maybe basis? Maybe type of nationalism sometimes, but uh, thanks God, it's not like that frequent. Okay. Yeah, maybe. but uh, another, uh, you know, maybe you saw announcements looking for like people to rent a flat. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Slavics only. Really? <laughs> yes. That's really discriminatory. It, yeah, because like uh, people just do not want uh, immigrants mm-hmm. to. Do they, what do they consider you to be immigrants? No, but uh, like I mean, uh, okay. Are you with... are you being people of the Caucasus? Yes, but um, I think it's different for different people. Maybe some of them just don't want immigrants to mm-hmm. take the the place and um some people like it you can understand it because uh uh they just will mm, like immigrants they have to uh, save money economize and like lots of them live in a small, small area. area so and it's kind of not that good for apartment mm-hmm. and uh Caucasian, they just can think uh, that uh, this uh, relatable to Caucasian as well. But I don't think that I think that situation uh, with the nationalism is uh, much better now in Moscow than it was like ten years ago. Mm, that's good. Yeah. It's got, it's got the opposite in the rest of Europe that mm. anti immigrant like national sentiment is growing but in russia it's kind of in the decline you're saying i mean caucasian people but i do not know the situation with asian immigrants because Mm -hmm. like i'm not an asian immigrant i cannot understand it so you know and um, yeah some caucasian like they have problems with uh, finding a place to live Mm. because some people just do not want to uh to rent like the place to Caucasian people right uh yeah and you know about mispresentation or how do you say it? like the the Caucasian people are not presented in Russia and uh like not all the Russians can know about like differences about different ethnicities like the, right Actually, like my nationality, my nationality is not very popular in Caucasus as well. Uh, 
because you know sometimes、What? you can like talk to Dagestan、mm-hmm. or Chechen people. Okay. And so I'm coaching there. Oh, where is where is it? Really? <laughs> yes, so, but it's, it's not far away. It's like two hundred kilometers. <laughs> how did you not、um, know that? Yeah. So how is it taught in school? Russia's diversity. Because in India we we okay I know all the twenty eight twenty eight I think we have twenty nine states twenty nine states、mm-hmm. I just I, I I at least I know the names of the states like、mm-hmm. okay this state is like a、yeah. it's in the north or it's、oh, in the east eighty five regions in Russia oh Jesus <laughs> <laughs> yeah but but at least but twenty two republics your your neighbor republics you can know them yeah, yeah. that's true、uh, I don't know、uh, just because we're quite a small nation like、uh, ethnicity okay. Uh, and、um, for example, Chechen. I think、uh, if you take all of them in the world, they are like one million.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, my nationality, it's like maximum three hundred thousand in the world. Wow! Like, like including you, Euro-、uh, including、uh, America, Turkey,、uh-huh. and Kazakhstan. Wow! So not much. But we also have Balkan people who are like. Almost the same, and together I think I hope we will be like four hundred and a half. Dude, that, that I think like twenty five percent of my city in India is yes. like. Yes, <laughs> you know,、uh, all the Kerala people could live、uh, in my town. Like, wow, really? And there would be some more place <laughs> <laughs> left. Oh, yeah, then I'm really lucky. I found you. <laughs> yeah, but. Okay, that's why like we're not that、uh-huh. uh, well represented represented in、yes. the general idea of the course.、Mm, yeah, but uh, we have some specific places uh in our region. Like I mean, uh, Karachai and Balkar people.、Mm-hmm. It's Mount Elbrus.、Mm-hmm. It's like so. The- Elbrus is like the biggest mountain in Europe. Yes.、Mm-hmm. The tallest. I mean. Yes,、uh, and also some resorts like Dubai, Arhus,、um, Tikaldar. So are these like tourist spots? Yes. So c- c- tell us, is the Caucasus is like a good place for tourists to come? Yes. Because most、like、tourists just come to Moscow、places. and Petersburg and then just. Well,、uh, like there are different、uh, types of t- tourism. If, if you want to go to museums, you go to Moscow and take Petersburg.、Uh-huh. If you want to go to mountains and forests, you go to Caucasus or Karelia or something like that. Oh. So.、Um, How do we get there? You fly to Krasnodar, then you have to take a bus to your no, place. No, you go to Minvode. Minivode. Minivode. It's like、uh, there is also an、uh, international airport in Minivode. How do I spell it? Mini. Minivode. Minivode. Well,、uh, full name is Mineralny Vode. Minivode. Yeah, Min- min- what Mineralny Vode. That does. That means mineral water. Yeah. Literally means mineral water. Yes. Okay. Like、uh, you know the、uh, like the district、mm-hmm. of Stavropol Krai is called Kavkazsky Mineralny Vode. Uh huh. And、uh, my town. Uh-huh. Tsivosk is a part of it,、ah. so it's also resort towns. Like、uh, there were resort towns,、uh, there were a lot of、uh, sanatoriums, and people come.、Uh-huh. When do they come? Russia, in in the winters or the summers usually?、Um, usually summer. In the winters, can you like go snowboarding? Yeah, snowboarding is uh, it's uh, better in Kerchacha, Kesi, and Kabardino Balkaria. Uh huh. So there's Dubai, there is、uh, Elbrus, Arhus.、Uh, uh, so how do you get from the airport to these places? You have to take a bus.、Mm, right, I'm not sure about buses,、uh, but、uh, you can go to the town,、mm-hmm. and there are like touristic agencies.、Mm-hmm. They can uh, uh, bring you to、mm. to the mountains. Yeah, that's really cool. Or just rent a car. Or just rent a car. <laughs> That's really cool. And so, it, it, there's this kind of misconception. Maybe it's true that the Caucasus are not very safe for travel for, especially for、mm. the tourists. Is that true, or do you digress? Do you disagree to that? Well,、um, I think it's mostly、uh, safe.、Mm-hmm. Of course, I would not recommend women to travel alone. Mm-hmm. Like in any place in the world. Okay. <laughs> uh, but in Caucasus, to be honest, yeah, it's better to uh be in groups. 
But what? just in case, like in everywhere, like you, it's, it's safe. It's more safe. Like it's, it's safer to travel in groups just to help each other. Mm-hmm. Because if you go to mountains, yeah, yeah, like that's true. It's kind of dangerous to go there alone. So what are the major cities in the Caucasus? Um, I know Mahachkala because there used to be a football Mahachkala. club called Anji Mahachkala. That's in Dagestan. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's the biggest one. Uh huh. Uh, Grozny. That's in Chechnya. Yes. Uh, in Ingushetia, it's uh, there in Nazrani and Magas. Nazrani is the old uh, capital, and Magas is the new one. Uh-huh. And it's uh, one of the youngest uh, cities, like uh, newest cities in Russia, oh. like towns. Okay. But they're kind of small, to be honest, in Ingushetia. Okay. Okay. Uh, there is all Vladikavkaz in mm-hmm. the city. Uh, Nalchik. That's where Milan is from. Yes. Mm-hmm. In Kabardino Balkaria. Uh, Pitigorsk. So That's in the Pitigorsk Krai? It's Pitigorsk, it's Stavropolsk uh, Krai. Stavropolsk Krai? It's uh, my town. That's where you're from. <laughs> it's, okay. uh, it's considered to be the capital of the entire Krai. Uh, the entire, no, not the Krai, but the Caucasus. Ah, the, it's like the administrative capital yes. of the entire Caucasus. Okay. Yes, but. It's like small towns, like uh, four or five hundred thousand Some people live in there. Mm. Um, of course, there are famous uh, towns as uh, Kislovodsk and Yisintuki. Maybe if I have not. Uh, those. Maybe you've seen water Yisintuki. It's like it's like Russian avian or something. A Russian avian. Oh, uh, uh, well, Caucasus and especially Kafkaski Miralne Vode uh-huh. region is known for its water. Okay. Yeah, and so uh, they bottle the water. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, the water in bottles say uh, is not that like pure, uh, p- uh, not Priesi. real one. But yeah. if you go uh, uh, to Caucasus, uh-huh. uh, like there are like buildings in parks where you can just come and uh, pour water oh. for yourself, and it's free. And okay. it's mineral water, and it's like the real mineral water, well, not the ones in I should try stores. that. <laughs> and it's not tasty to be honest, but like for people who first try it. Ah. Okay. Um, and Sochi. Sochi's in which? Sochi's. Yeah, in which here. republic is it? It's Krasnodarsky uh, Krai. I told in the Krai. Okay. Uh, and uh, Cherkiask. It's also a small town, but it's the capital of Karachay Cherkessia. Awesome. So let's talk about Karajatikesia. And Stavropol, of course. Stavropol is a Stavropolsky Krai. Oh, okay. Uh, Stavropol, yeah, I found it, found it. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about your place. Okay. What's cool about your place? <laughs> it's nature, mm-hmm. culture, t- mm-hmm. and uh, I think diversity as well. Diversity being Karajatikesia and Karachai, Chakesins, uh, Abaza, and uh, Nogai people. Could, could you briefly describe okay. what's the difference between the four groups? Okay, um, Cherkis people. I'm more close to Kabardian people. They have like their own specific language. It's not Turkic. It's Caucasian one, like like the real Caucasian language. So it's a it's a, it's a linguistic group called Caucasian. Yeah, there are Caucasian languages. Uh, what's an example other than your uh, language? Oh, it's Chukasian. It's uh, some of uh, Dagestan languages, like our language, and uh, Georgian comes in there. Uh, no, Georgian is a Katvelian group. Armenian comes in. There? No, uh, Armenian is Indo-European, but oh. Armenian like it's also it's uh, very different from other Indo-European languages. Yeah. yeah, I had Armenian on the podcast. Yeah, I've, I've heard it. <laughs> you heard it? <laughs> yeah, like half of it. I ah, okay. of it. So. Um, Chechen, uh-huh. uh, Chechen and English languages are also Caucasian. Um, yeah, and uh, Abaza language is also Caucasian. So Ab- Abaza is it's close to Abkhazia. Abkhazia, okay. Uh, like uh, in terms of language. Oh, and Chechen? Chechen? Uh, no, I mean, they are like. And uh, isolate gathered in one group, which is called Caucasian. Uh, Caucasian. But okay. like they're not like 
very similar, similar okay to each other. all of them are like language isolates but since they're in the same region they kind of group together in a way yes isn't it? kind of a, of course they have some similarities mm-hmm. but not that they they could not understand each other mm. like a Cherkes and Kapadan people could understand each other okay and uh, Cherkes and Abaza people like hardly oh. <laughs> but um Cherkes and Chechen they would not understand each other at all and it's just 200 kilometers different yes. between these two places yeah. which is crazy oh uh, <laughs> there's some places in the world uh, like even worse like Papua New Guinea uh, yeah so one kilometer like yeah every village has yes has a slow language yeah. yeah you read this book called um guns germs and steel by mm. uh Jared Diamond mm-hmm. in that he talks a lot about how these uh, language isolates developed mm-hmm. due to geographical I, I've seen a to- talks it a talks video about it uh-huh. that uh, um, like the uh, density like uh, the more density is the, the more languages like uh, like when different people live too close to each other mm-hmm. like in Papua New Guinea Papua New Guinea. New Guinea, yeah. So, um, the, what were we talking about? And your four Kashi. groups in your... Yeah, and uh, Nogai and Karachai, they're Turkic. Okay, so two groups are Turkic, two groups are... Caucasian. Caucasian. Yes. In um, terms of linguistics. Yes, and um, Nogai people are look a little bit different. Okay, let's, let's see how they look. Uh, okay, there are also Nogai people in Dagestan. Uh, and Nogai people in Karachachi case here. Uh, how do I spell it? N O G A I? Nogai. Yeah, Nogai. Nogai people. Okay, let's see how you guys look. They look a little bit Asian. Yeah, like... Yo, they look a little bit Indian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but. Uh, yeah, they look, yeah, look a little bit Asian. I, like, they're like very different. I know some of them look like almost European. And really? uh, some of them look like Korean. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these, these look, I, I can see like Indian looking people here. <laughs> I can see like Central Asian looking people here. So these are no guys. Yes. And uh, they're Turkic. Yes. And they're, they're also mainly Islamic, I believe. Yes. Okay. They're also Islamic. Okay. So what's the other group called? No uh, guy we've seen. Uh, okay. Karachay, Ab- Abaza. Abha. Ab- Ab- Abbas, like, oh, Abbas, I don't know, uh, Abbas people, I think. Abbas people? What Abbas Abbas Ab- Ab- Abbasins, yeah. Okay. Um, like, they look European. Yeah, they do look more, wait. Abbasin people. Wait, they look very European. Yeah. These are other, oh, this is Abbasin, these are English, these are Shug- Shungan. Shungan, yeah. They look Iranian. Yeah, not very European, but like of course, like we have uh, mostly dark hair. Yeah, like, yeah, and like, dark and, and black or brown eyes. And our eyes like uh, blue eyes are. Uh, are they too? Like, yeah, like a lot of people have blue eyes and cockatoo. Really? Yeah. Like, so blue and green, eye, and green eyes. Like oh. my mom has blue eyes. And really? All uh, all of her brothers and sisters have blue eyes. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And but I mean color of hay is mo- mostly like brown and yeah brown black, and black. Uh, but sometimes they're like blonde and uh, ginger people as well in really? Chechnya there's a lot of ginger people really actually, yeah well I well that's interesting yes so so that's the Abbasins uh could I try like for uh, I I've yeah <laughs> Abbasin uh, uh Circesian Karachay no guy Okay, so is like the dynamics between all these four groups kind of peaceful, normal yeah, in this? Peaceful. Right now it's quite peaceful. Of course, there are like some old stories about, uh, like, of course, they had conflicts, uh-huh. but not that serious. Like, it was serious for, them, for our ancestors. Mm-hmm. But now, like, uh, people live and uh, that's okay you some people marry each other like uh, different nationalities like there are quite a lot of uh, mixed well not that much like in russia like uh, international uh, marriage right. is not that 
common. Uh, common. Mm -hmm. But there's still some international, uh, like mi mixed children. Mm. So what, which language do you use to com communicate with each other? Uh, in your republic, like do you use Russian if you're Chirke, Russian. and if you want to speak to someone who's a boss, and do you yeah. use Russian? Uh, sometimes, like uh, if uh, somebody like it, it happens when it's like a village is totally Karachai, but uh, for some reason a Chirkes family lives there, mm -hmm. like they can know uh, Karachai, Karachai language like, and yeah, they okay. understand it. They probably would not speak, but they would understand everything. Mm. So, yeah. That's cool. And do you have a lot of tourists coming into your place yes. to see Elbrus? I think that would be the major tourist attraction. Yeah. Uh, if, for those who want to see Elbrus, they mostly come to Cavalina uh, Balkari because it's uh, they have a more comfortable place for it. Because, like... Uh, that part of Albers is safe. Do you mean to climb? Yes. Safe to climb, okay. Uh, and uh, it's so uh, like um, convenient for skiing. Mm. And in our part, we have Dambai and Arhus, like the most popular ones. And of course, like in winter, the people come to uh, ski and in summer to camp. Is there like a skiing culture in? Kafkas. Do Kafkas people like snowboarding uh, and skiing? Like uh, young people like it. Like uh -huh. it's. Uh, I think that when you come there, you mostly see Russian tourists. Actually. Exactly. Yeah. I have never been to ski. Like uh, I've never been skiing. Whoa! Yes. Even though you live so yes, close. I I hate it so much. I, I asked for my parents so so many times uh -huh. uh, that we could go. Skiing. Just uh, skiing, like my parents just do not ski, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's the thing. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. is there like this cultural, you know, skiing and snowboarding? Is it like I more Russian European yeah, it's, it's idea? More like Russian European, because, uh, of course, uh, these mountains like became uh, like skiing resorts in in Russia, even Soviet Union. To be honest, mm -hmm. like uh, it started in Russian Empire, like in the beginning of twentieth century. But okay. Before it, it was just mountains, like beautiful mountains. You can uh, you can watch. It. <laughs> that's because. interesting, because I, I for for me like I tried snowboarding, mm. and I kind of feel it's a very European sport. Yes. So I was just wondering, even though you guys have geographically the place yes. to ski, you guys culturally it's not yeah, a it's Caucasian like thing. Not, it's a European thing. Yeah, uh, that uh, like I think skiing becomes popular among uh, young people but I don't know um, and alpinism actually mm -hmm. and this is more a uh, culturally Caucasian thing mm, is it because uh, yeah people just climbed mountains and um, I remember at school I've um, I've made a like a talk about uh, uh, the first uh, 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 the expedition expedition to mm -hmm. Cobras was was not the first but the first like registered in Russia ah okay uh, and it was after uh, Karachay uh, the the territory of present Karachay Chukis and Kabardino Balkaria were um, annexed, annexed by yes, the Russian the Empire Russian like in 1829 mm-hmm first expedition to Elbrus. So that is recorded as the first expedition, yeah, but, in but reality, course, in reality like, people were going there all the time, but they yes. weren't registered under some mountaineering institute yes, in some that. place. Uh, mm. So, uh, and um, during the, the first expedition, there were Russian general, Emmanuel, and uh, some uh, scientists and uh, engineers. Um, but they, of course, took uh, local people mm -hmm. uh, to help them mm. and only one local man uh, reached the peak so actually the like, generals didn't didn't because they are not like they're not alpinists they do not live in such yeah places. exactly and it's the same you know in nepal like the mount everest climbing there's these people called sherpas mm. so they live in the mountains or they're 
like physiologically more acclimatized to that mm-hmm. kind of environment. Yeah. So when Tenzing Norgay climbed it, it you know it was like Edmund Hillary climbed it. Tenzing Norgay was like his Sherpa. So mm-hmm. even though Edmund Hillary is considered the first person to climb Everest. Tenzing Norway was the guy, the Nepalese Sherpa, mm-hmm. was like the guy kind of guiding him there because yeah. he is like a native of that area. Yes, and um, oh, like alpinism is uh, also popular in uh, Caucasus. No, like, there's a lot of mountains, not only Alpes, but uh, tourists come to reach them. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. Mm, what else? Uh, camping uh-huh. in summer because they're beautiful places. I know it's such a stereotype question, but do you guys have bears? <laughs> what? Bears. Bears are. Uh, Medvier? I'm not. Yeah, I think in some places there are bears. There are, of course, wolves. Oh. Uh, but bears, like, uh, they're not much. Like, they cannot be a lot of bears because it's a big animal <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. and um, um, I think that uh, like they say that animals are more afraid of people than people yeah. are actually afraid of animals so yeah but there are wolves mm-hmm. uh, okay so what do you do what do you do for fun in your republic um, Even though, I know you, do, you don't live there but in your city what do a Caucasian people of our age do for fun oh <laughs> no, it's illegal <laughs> <laughs> that's legal yeah uh uh but sad that, but true <laughs> uh n- and that's not something i do but uh, okay um like uh normal things that youngsters do all over the world just walk <laughs> play fifa <laughs> Mm, yeah um uh sometimes i visit republic like i uh, mostly visit my relatives mm-hmm. uh, but um uh, sometimes we go to mountains on holidays just uh, for walk mm. uh, not to ski not to camp not to um nothing adventurous uh, not for ha- like something like hiking mm-hmm. but not even hiking just walking and uh watching <laughs> mm. so yeah um and but and the starting you told like you can see people making shashliks everywhere is it, it, so i think like shashlik is kind of like a caucasian uh, tradition okay shashlik oh, okay so for people who know shashlik it's is like a grill information yeah official information is kind of that shashlik is Turkish? uh is uh Crimean because I mean. hmm. because shash is uh, the thing which the rod yeah like uh, okay uh, in it's like in Crimean language but uh like Karachi people call it tishlik tishlik okay. it's almost the, the same word shashlik and tishlik uh, like uh, people just had a lot of meat <laughs> all these nationalities and of course they cooked it. But they just call it different names. Ah. Okay. And Which meat do you mainly use? Uh, sheep? Uh, sheep. Uh, well, uh, local people usually use sheep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Russians love uh, pork. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, yeah, um, sometimes it's beef. Mm-hmm. Uh, it can be even... Uh, chicken or fish oh really yeah but like uh, everything you can do like it's, ba- it's basically a grill yeah it's a grill like you can even put vegetables like, on the, it the true shashlik is like on this things like st- uh, metal sticks right uh and uh when you do it you of course uh, use like the barbecue thing oh. like uh, it's more more about eating tasty food to not thinking too much of like but it's like a social function too yeah, right social you get well, your friends together you make like that fire thing and you yeah. well, skew some shush it's even more russian culture i think uh, about picnics hmm. you know um now it's may holiday uh coming like for days of may holiday and people who have uh, dachas go uh, and uh, 
make shashlik because yeah dacha is like a summer home for russians a, in a the countryside cottage house cottage house yes um i find like my relatives like they can do uh one uh, ones who have they like the determined uh the, like detached houses um mm-hmm. uh, Oh, they can, and they have mangals. Mangal. Is, What's a mangal? It's a grill. Like it's like oh. the construction where you can put coal and uh, burn it. Dude, can I say something? In our language, mangal is also something like that. Mm-hmm. But in Hindu, I'm, 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 fact check me. But from my memory, it's in Hindu weddings. It's also a place where a fire mm-hmm. is made, and the couple like goes around it three oh, times. Yeah signifying three rotations around the earth mm-hmm. so we call that p- fire and the construction the grill in a way you can you can call it that a mangal mangalam i think it's uh, it can be indian because uh, india in actually influenced uh, iranian culture mm-hmm. and iranian culture influenced uh, Caucasian, Caucasian. Caucasian. yeah yeah I, like um i know that the word um like the prayer in uh, Muslim prayer is commonly called namaz, mm-hmm. which is an Indian word. I'm not very sure, because like, we consider that to be like an Arabic word, like a Muslim like, word. Uh, because Arabians, Arabic is called salat, I think, because namaz is like more Iranian, like. Maybe. Yeah. Um, right, and yeah, I think I've heard that uh, Buddhist. Uh, mm, uh, temples like uh, monastery. Uh, Mon- yeah, monasteries. Mon- uh, monasteries, uh, like their structure influenced the structure of Muslim madrasa. In the Caucasus. Not in Caucasus, like in Muslim general. Wow, I yeah. didn't know that. So, like, I mean, uh, everything is connected to each other. Can I just add? Don't you have like a Buddhist Caucasian republic called Kalmykia? It's not Caucasian. It's uh, it's. Uh, Casp- like it's isn't it next? Isn't it next it's to, next to Dagestan, Dagestan? But it's so completely different. Or even if you watch it, like where is it? it? It's sand. Ah, yeah, yeah. This, this is it. Yeah. Where, where are the borders? I can't uh-huh. see it. Elista, is this? Elista, yeah, right. So, so it's like a desert, isn't it? Yeah. And that is entirely Kalmykia. Yeah. This big... Uh, I think... Uh, I mean, a part of it, it might be Dagestan, but... Ah. Uh, Kalmykia is kind of a desert. But, but Kalmykia is not part, considered part, part no, of the Caucasus. No. It's not a culture... Like, uh, maybe if you, like, map, it seems like that, but uh-huh. it's, like, a completely different culture. Yeah, that's the thing, because it's really interesting for me, because Kalmykia is a Buddhist republic, yeah. which is located in... close to the... Caspian. North Caucasus and the Caspian Sea. And the next Buddhist area is all the way here yeah. in Buryatia, Tuva, and uh, Irkut region. Mm-hmm. The other major Buddhist areas of Russia. Mm. Which is so far away. Yeah. So far away. I don't, I don't even know how it happened. <laughs> I think it's like the Mongol invasion mm, ring. And this particular... Yeah. Everyone else kind of became Islamic, but this particular maybe. republic chose to remain Buddhist. Yeah. Which is really interesting. Do you yeah. know anyone from here? I'd love to speak to someone from this part. Mm, no, unfortunately. Well, I I think I know. Uh, I, I'm not, like, friends with uh-huh. the girl, but I know she started, like, first year in my university. I helped her with something. Oh, so I think and she's Kalmyk. She's Kalmyk? Yeah. And she speaks English? Yeah, she studies linguistic as well. Perfect. Introduce us. Because <laughs> oh. for me, Kalmyk is one of the most interesting Russian mm. republics. Because how? How did yeah. you become Buddhist and you... Uh, yeah. Tuva is also very interesting. Tuva is very interesting. Because, I did Buryatia. Uh, some people say that Tuva is probably the most dangerous region, actually. In terms of? In terms of everything. Like in, terms in terms of everything of, oh, in terms of Russian people because of nationalism and in like Tua that. really Re- really yeah and some people say that Tuvan people okay um, like I do not want to like trans- uh, to tell like all the stereotypes but um, that they're like more aggressive 
Tua. Yeah. Tua, do Tua people look like people from Buryatia, right? Yeah, Asian. Asian. I I haven't met anyone from Tua yet, but mm, uh, I heard that they re- really like more. I like there's a nationalist sentiment there, in Tua. Tua. Uh, what? Um, <laughs> uh, like Tuan people. They are also, oh, actually they Turkic, but uh-huh. Buddhist, uh-huh. and they became a part of Russia not that long ago. Which means Soviet Union time? Uh, something like that, or maybe the beginning of it. I don't remember. Mm. I should check it out. <laughs> that's interesting, but th- th- that's really th- that's why it's, I, my first Russification postcard was Buryatia because mm. that was a really interesting t- place. But at people, I think, are they more assimilated? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Than like the person I interviewed with, he says his he speaks Russian. Mm. He is he doesn't like he's not very comfortable with this the language of Buryatia. Mm-hmm. He speaks Russian, he's Christian, mm-hmm. he is very assimilated with the Russian mm. culture. Which is also very interesting. And he lives like right next to Mongolia in mm. Udanude. U- Ulan 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 Ulanude, yeah. Mm. That's the name of the city. Which is really interesting. So uh, while I was doing the re- research for this place, I, I there's one theme which I increasingly like I repeatedly keep coming across which was a talk of something called the circassian genocide uh, who did that okay the... Ch- 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 no 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 or... yeah about about the Ch- circassian people ah, because, Ch- Kessin, yeah. Ch- because Ch- there was apparently a nation called circassia a nation mm-hmm. of which when the russian empire uh, annexed it or made it a part of it there was they something had to live their place. Yeah. Yes. How do like the people who live in those regions now remember that that experience uh, that particular this, uh, episode day in history? Is, um, the day May of the twenty first. Uh, uh, it's like um, like not a celebration. Like uh, like it's a, a symbolic day in Caucasus. Uh, Hall of Caucasus. And not Hall of Caucasus, but uh, I know it's um, like considered more important in uh, Kabardino Balkaria. Mm-hmm. And I think that is too, but uh, I've heard some news that like uh, monuments like uh, about this uh, genocide, but yeah. Do you consider, I mean, the people in your place, do they consider it to be like a genocide? Uh, you know, um, I've started hearing of it not that long ago, to be honest. Maybe just because I was not interested in it, I do not know that many Chukesian, uh friends. Uh-huh. So, yeah. But, okay, as I understand, the Chukesian genocide uh, was about... Um, they had... Like to live their motherland mm-hmm. and to move uh, to Turkey, to Jordan, things and places like that. Uh, yeah. But I don't know uh, about such words as genocide. Sometimes people argue about uh, Karachan Balkar genocide as well. Is it, if it's a genocide or not? Mm, I don't know, to be honest. How do the people there see it as? In general, like okay, I, 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 I come uh, across this May the they May the twenty first and the commemoration of the Circassian genocide. Do people actually pay attention to it, or is it like, you know? Well, you know, uh, the victims of it do not live in now in Caucasus. They live in other places or they died uh, during the genocide so Mm -hmm. you know um, it's more about like the memory that uh, their ancestors uh, suffered right yeah but uh, things like more considered Chukesian people like it's like their thing and like uh, they have their own like tragedies and Mm -hmm. Chukesian people have their own tragedies so Mm. Yeah. Interesting, because from like a foreign perspective, we never heard, we never heard of this. Because you know, it's not that um, okay. There is 
different genocides like there is Armenian genocide for example or Holocaust mm-hmm. uh, which like was much bigger and um, like okay um, I can I don't think I can speak about it because I do not not much of it because mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, in terms of uh, Holocaust or Armenian genocide there was like a goal to kill people like mm-hmm. to demolish the nation right. and uh, I do not know if it was obviously there was uh, an aim to assimilate them right. to make this place more comfortable for Russian people which is a process called Russification yes and sometimes uh, like Russification is aggressive right. yeah and uh, and uh, I don't know Uh, how is better to call that? Of course, it's aggressive and it's violence. Right. And but uh, it's not the same as Holocaust. Yeah. You know. So um, it, it's a nuanced uh, answer in a way that it happened during the war. A lot of people were disrupted. Okay. Violence was used. Yeah. But you, if you can call it genocide or not. It's a very contest-dependent yes, question. Yes, because uh, anyway, you know, Sochi, mm-hmm. actually, uh, the, the place where uh, the skiing um, of events mm-hmm. happened, uh, it's called Krasna Palana. Which is uh, red. Red Palana, I don't know. <laughs> Valley. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, Chukesan people protested. Uh, that uh, like Olympics is like a, it's like a celebration, it's like a holiday. Protested that it should take place there because it's called red because of the blood that was like there during the wars. Like, okay. Because like a lot of people died there. That's how the name Krasna Plan yes. came. Okay. And uh, maybe that's the reason why they renamed it to Rosa Hutter. What? Rosa is... Uh, is Re- Rose. Uh, Ro- Rosa uh, is... I thought it was connected to Rose, but Rosa was a name of somebody who lived there. Hutter. And Hutter is... Sounds Hutter is German. kind of a village. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but... Um, a lot of Shukasian people uh, do not like that uh, the place where their ancestors died became like a... Skiing resort. A pl- a skiing resort <laughs> and a uh, yeah, place f- for things like that, yeah. Interesting. Okay, so... Um, also, something which I found interesting was this was occupied by Germany. This Not your part, but some parts of the Caucasus yeah. while they were invading was... Russia. What... Right. Do you or your grandparents have any memories of living under German okay, occupation um, during the war? Great uh, patriotic war. Yeah, right. Uh, you know that Caucasian uh, battle and uh, Stalingrad battle were almost at the same time. Mm-hmm. And though Stalingrad is like was much more violent, like, uh, you know, people tied Like a lot of people died there, but uh, I felt that the actual aim of it just to stop Russian um, troops and invade Caucasus to get the oil in because, Baku. Yeah, and uh, okay. Um, my grandparents. So, uh, my grandmother was four when her the war started, and her father, her father was like uh, in army mm-hmm. and he left uh, to go to war like in the first days of mm-hmm. war so, and he died like pretty soon <laughs> like it fighting in the Caucasus no no it, it was uh, the war didn't reach Caucasus yet it okay. was uh, the west part of Russia okay of Soviet Union okay and um, I've heard some things that Um, in Caucasus, uh, in Kachacha case, the German invasion, like, uh, they wasn't that violent. Like, mm-hmm. uh, 
like things like Gestapo and things uh, did not happen much right. uh, in region of Kachachakese. But of course, in Stavaposki Krai, there are some like uh, partisans, heroes right. who, are, uh, who died because of German occu- uh, occupation. Yeah, and uh, um, okay, during the occupation, I don't think that somebody died of my uh, grandparents. Uh, okay, my one of my gra- grandparents, uh, my great grandfather died mm-hmm. during the war. And then uh, when they was uh, the Russian army came and the Germans left Caucasus. Like I think it's like two months or something. Uh the deportation happened. The deportation of Karachi people. So this was like this from okay. us. Stalin kind of suspected some people uh, collaborated with yes. the Germans. Yes, uh, because uh, as I said, what was not that violent uh, in Karachi case, like uh, the Germans' presence. Mm-hmm. And of course, like, like in any occupied territory, there are some uh, people like traitors, like in any territory, like in Ukraine, in Belarus, in like anyway. Mm-hmm. But uh, it happened that uh, Karachay, Balkar, Chechen, Ingush, Crimean had to leave their houses. And uh, they were sent to Central Asia after that. So the Soviet government just asked these people to pack their bags and move to yes. Central Asia? Just uh, to pack only necessary things. Like uh, in the night, uh, they just came to house and said, pack your, like, all the necessary things and just go to the train. To Central Asia? Yes. And... And what happened to the houses of these people? Who moved in? They were okay. Somehow, uh, they were. It was war, like many houses. Uh, uh many people, uh, needed houses. So, there of course, some people like uh neighbor ethnicities like Cherokee people, but uh, the Stalin's plan was uh to populate these mm-hmm. places with Georgian people. Mm-hmm. So uh, many towns and villages had Georgian names for several na- uh, years. Wow. For example, uh, the uh, town, which is now called Karachayevsk, mm-hmm. uh, and f- one first first found it was called uh, Mikayan Shahar. That doesn't sound Russian at all. Uh, not Russian. Mikoyan is an Armenian revolu- uh, revolutionist. Okay. Uh, a revolutionary and Shahar means uh. Shahar. T- uh, uh, town. Town. Yeah, and uh, during the deportation, it was called Kluhori, which is a Georgian mm. name. Yeah, and uh, other villages um, populated with uh, Georgians who. Had also Georgian names. Yes. And um, when um, a son died in 1953 mm-hmm. and uh, in 1957, uh, we were able to return. Like, and but the houses, most of the houses were like occupied with other people. And uh, for example, my uh, great grandmother mm-hmm. had to buy her house back. Mm. Like, yeah, and uh, a lot of a lot of relatives died actually during the deportation because of the conditions. Uh, like there was not much food uh, and uh, diseases as well. Yeah. So all this was based on a suspicion yeah. of that a lot of people well, were traitors. I think that suspicion like just was like not the not the main reason. It just it was part of like it's called the Great Purge. 
is, I don't know. Is, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm mixing it up. It's like Stalin wanted to like move different ethnicities from here to yes, here and here to mix it like, up. Uh, just, you know, I think he wanted to uh, uh, make a uh, Georgian territory bigger mm-hmm. and send just people he didn't like to Asia to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I mean this is an imperialistic pol- policy. I don't know. Stalin is such a strange <laughs> leader, to be honest. You cannot tell if he is a leftist or not. Yeah. <laughs> or because, um, you know, um, he is not Russian. He was George. probably. The only not Russian head of, of the government, but SSSR. he's so much like pro Russian ethnicity policy, like, uh, yeah, and so imperialistic policy. Hitler wasn't German, he was Austrian. Yeah, <laughs> maybe you want to, yeah, uh, but you know, Hitler was, um. Uh, like German from Austria, uh, uh, Austria, and uh, I, 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 like I, as I've heard that Austria is like more multinational, mm-hmm. and uh, like the hatred to other nationalities in Austria, like made him like to climb uh, all this uh, ladder mm. into the. Icons of power. Like, I mean, uh, you know that he was Austrian, but he fought for Germany. Yeah, in World War One. Yes. And uh, I don't know, it's a, some film, of course it's a film, and he said that he didn't want to fight with uh, Jewish, Slavic, and uh, Gypsy people, like, in one uh, uh, group with mm. them. So... Uh, like nationalism started because he lived with them and he didn't like it. Like I mean, I think that Germ- if he maybe if he was raised in Germany, he would not even know such people <laughs> and he wouldn't care about <laughs> it. You know. Yeah, that's an interesting thought experiment, isn't it? Mm, yeah, I don't know. Okay, and. Uh, well, deportation. Mm, deportation so, d- d- did years. your family have to go through that? Most of most of the families, like mine, yeah, of, of course. Oh. Yeah, and... Uh, so, how do you kind of digest that experience of having... It's a great... I think it's a great tragedy, of course. A lot of people died there. Um, my relatives as well. Like, uh, my grandmother became, like, an orphan in two years. Like, first her father died in war, and then her mother died uh, during the deportation. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, uh, like, other my great-grandfathers, uh, uh, both of my great-grandfathers died uh, as well, okay, uh, during the deportation. And, uh, of course, the fact that you had to buy your house back mm. like it was already your house but you you need to buy back and um, my grand uh, grandmother uh, she was a child but her parents had a house in Kislovodsk and uh, so when they left uh, 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 several families lived in this house and she could not return it back like even now we i don't know what what happened with this house but somebody else uh, possessed it well so the government didn't help at all when you guys were coming back i have heard there was some kind of um, money maybe Uh but anyway like uh, there were also people living in this house who also did not have money mm. at that time so it was quite difficult and uh, uh, for example my mother's side uh, like my grandmother and my grandfather married in in Asia mm-hmm. and their first like four or five children were born there as well okay 
uh, but uh, they both lived in mountainous regions like when they were children okay but then uh, they had to find another place in Asia you mean? not in Asia in, in Caucasus okay, like, when they're coming because back. yeah because they could not uh, live in like the place of their childhood anymore mm. but of course some people uh, had well uh, could take their houses back but um, not for free most of cases right yeah and uh, the moment I think is like the, uh, the greatest tragedy because it's uh, was not that long ago yeah literally it was recent yes and um, is there still a knock-on effect right now is there still influence of that migration of people from here to here is there still some negative effects you're feeling um, even today because of that of course it's the thing why you cannot totally um like when a uh, white many people not, cannot totally consider them like too close with Russians, you know, and because uh, there was violence from like not Russian Soviet mm-hmm. things, and and uh, maybe it's uh, just one of the reasons why not many people don't like the like officials. I don't know, uh, like the federal government, mm. something the Soviet Union, and things like that. Yeah. And is there more of a resistance to assimilating to the bigger Russian cultural sphere because of all these experiences of being more protective of your own culture and language and mm. other stuff because of yeah, these experiences? I mean, sometimes such experiences, they make you like um, value things you have and try to save them. Well, and uh, yeah, but of course it was... Uh, damage to culture because older people died there and uh, usually older people uh, elder people uh, teach uh, younger generations and uh, that was the problem I think and uh, of course some people because they became orphans they had to um, grow uh grow faster you know like mm, my yeah. like my uh grandfather for example you know he was like 17 or something when they moved and his father died and he was like the oldest man in his family mm-hmm. and of course he had to take care of his brothers and sisters yeah mm, yeah it's quite hard and uh and uh, the thing uh, which uh, okay uh, I don't like that some people uh, still think that the deportation like was good like what's was, the argument of be- being good they really think that they were a lot of traitors in these territories and they really had to be punished uh-huh. and I hate it because like I've seen people who like my like my grandmother uh, who suffered of it and I know she couldn't trade her country when she was four or six years old that's true yeah and but uh, it's uh, it cannot be fair you know yeah and uh, yeah. So they didn't like identify people who betrayed. They're like, if you're Turkesian, that means you betrayed the Soviet Union. Hence, you should leave. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they said like that. But of course, uh, maybe um, a lot of them do not understand that deportation is not like the business class uh, plane to Kazakhstan. You know? Who didn't understand that? I, I, I mean, maybe they do not understand that they... Uh, who do you mean by that? I mean Russians, like who who say that uh, ah, the deportation ah, is okay. fair. They maybe do not understand that it was actually very violent. That 
yeah, people oh, okay. were like uh, forced from their homes. Like, uh, like uh, f- uh, they the way how they were transported there, just in, not not trains like passengers' trains. You know, it's uh, like it's like a box. Yeah, it's with no toilet, no, no windows, no, even, maybe. no windows. Like maybe small. Uh, Holes. It's, it's, it's kind of like how the Jews in Poland were transported from yes. the ghettos to Auschwitz. And uh, because of these conditions, like people uh, just become, uh, uh, they, they had diseases, yeah. infections. And that was one of the reasons why many uh, did not survive, like even the road there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, maybe they do not understand this as well. That do you, do, but, so can I ask a question? Do you, the history that you learn in your school, in the Caucasus, is mm-hmm. it the same history that is taught to na- ethnic Russians? Is it the same curriculum? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, well, in, uh, the difference is that uh, in. Um, Republic schools, they had uh, more uh, extra lessons of mother tongue and mm. uh, literature, um, but uh, like uh, the history, mathematics curriculum is the same. So the Russians learn yes, they the same history as you learn. Yeah, uh, because you know war was uh, such a like big event and uh, the deportation of. So d- does your history textbook talk about yes. Stalin's deportation yes. of people from Caucasus to Kazakhstan? Uh, yeah, uh, the deportation unfortunately is just one of the pages of all these things mm-hmm. that happened at that time because right. uh, not only North Caucasus uh, nation and uh, ethnicities, Ukrainians, uh, uh, and not only ethnicities, just normal people died. Because of uh, this, like, control of uh, government, mm. like uh, maybe you've heard of the Zakon of Troch Kalaskach, you know, was Kalasok. It's um, I don't know what that is. Uh, Kalasok. It's uh, cotton. No, it's uh, a thing uh, to get bread. Uh, wheat or like uh, when wheat grows it grows in such things like it ah, looks like i understood what you're yeah. thinking about mm. yeah and i don't uh, know the english for it too okay and um uh, uh, the law was uh when a machine uh goes through a field to mm-hmm. to collect harvest these things yeah, yeah harvest and of course there's some things left yeah and you cannot take it because it's the state possession uh-huh and uh, like it was called uh, like if you take like three of them you already like sent to Gulag wow. or something like for yes. taking three stocks of it, wheat yes uh, of course it's like a, in uh, a song I don't think it's official name of it mm-hmm. but uh, there were situations when like um, for just small pieces of food mm. uh, people were punished because it was like a state thing. Like state terror. Like you heard of the Goldemo, right? Goldemo. Oh, oh yeah. It, it also connected to this topic because, um, you know, from the, so um, like paradox that it is the place where like everything grows. Like yeah, they say that if you... Let's just if explain you, Goldemo. For the audience. Okay. Um, the Golden Moor is uh, like a great hunger. Famine. Uh, fam- yes. In uh, Ukraine the territory of Ukraine. And Belarus? Oh, just Ukraine. It's, it's more Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing is that, why well, I say it's a par- paradox, um, because it's the place with a, like, a great soil. They say you can like put a stick in it <laughs> and it will grow. Yeah. Ukraine is like the bread, bras- and bread basket of the USSR was. Yes, and it was the place where people suffered uh, from hunger and famine. Uh, and um, why? Because uh, uh, all the people collected was uh, sent 
like it was um like the federal possession like they took it and uh, only small pieces were left for people who were there and uh, it was such a situation in Soviet Union that uh, the village just uh, was feeding the cities. Yeah. And you know that um, uh, the ones who lived in the villages, they um, got right to get a passport. like To go to the city? In, no, not to the, go to the city. Like, uh, yes, like they had um, less like mobility. Mm. than the ones who lived in cities and when i found it out it was i don't know i i i was kind of surprised it is surprising uh, yes because like they wanted like people who are uh to stay there to work because if they will uh, be able to move to cities there nobody will left in the villages to work yes yeah and that's quite sad and um uh, the fact of goldmor is um uh, sometimes objected i think it's not officially recognized yes. as being like st- it's like a state sp- i would say sponsored but mismanagement of food resources which actually led to a famine mm. in an area where it shouldn't because it's problems of you know communist a centralized system, communist yes government which controls every aspect of production yeah and um um yeah <laughs> this is quite sad <laughs> it is so i think we are well past two hours <laughs> more than how i promised oh we're almost at 220 so to conclude this, what would you like to say to your audience about, about to our audience about the old republic? Let's end it on a positive note. Okay, um, I'd say that Karachi uh, Chukese is a small but very beautiful republic. Of course, it has uh, its own problems, like any place in the world. But uh, the poor economy, for example, and things like that. I think I would now say more about Kashesha Kese than like in these two hours. <laughs> um, there is a lot of nationalities, uh, a lot of beautiful places. And uh, of course, like uh, it's worth visiting it. Yeah, and um, of course, you should also visit other republics of North Caucasus because they're quite similar but at the same time they're different like not the same yeah i think that's all <laughs> well asiat thank you so much for coming thank yeah. you so much for spending the time and i learned a lot of cool things and usually it's so rare to find someone from russia who speaks english as good as you so i feel kind of lucky oh. <laughs> that i found you it's not that good actually <laughs> it is I it is sometimes i just saw oh, what was this war <laughs> <laughs> no but you, you know how it is in russia right um, people even our age are not very comfortable with english but you're very comfortable and you are able to <laughs> articulate your thoughts very well yeah. so i'm so glad that Milana introduced us. Thank you, Milana. (laughs) And thank you for your time. And I know you're fasting. And Mm. so I'm not going to take any more of your time. Thank you so much. And uh, wait. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And with that, we come to the end of episode 13, Lucky 13. And this one was a Russification episode. So see you next time.